Welcome to the 2024 NAI preseason uh, preview. I would Luke Bentley, the head coach at William Penn University, and I'm Jared Goldberg, the head men's volleyball coach at the Masters University. We're going to walk through a little bit of some of the conferences around the country and what we expect to see throughout the year uh, as we go into this. Uh, Luke, why don't you why don't you talk a little bit uh, to start us off? Uh, about the Heart of America Conference and kind of what you're expecting to see throughout the conference. Sure. Uh, as per usual, I feel like the Heart of America will be one of the better conferences in the country for the NAIA. Um, last year, we had two teams go to the national tournament. The previous year, three teams. The previous year before that, four teams. So well represented on the national stage. As we go through the other conferences, I'm sure we'll talk about reasons maybe why things have gotten a little more even uh, over the years, which has been really great to see more representation from the rest of the country as the sport has grown. Um, but yeah, I mean, defending conference champion Park University, uh, probably going to be uh, the preseason favorite to win conference again. Um, they do lose a few players, uh, a few guys transferred out, but they bring back, bring back conference player of the year, Joao Fredrich. Um, an outside, a senior now from Brazil, um, who led them to the national semifinals last year. So I think they're probably the, the favorite to start the season. Uh, I would say a couple other teams to note that are probably right behind them would be uh, Grandview, who's two-time national champion the previous two years prior to last year. Um, they returned a plethora of guys too, uh, most notably Danny Wong, fifth-year middle blocker, All-American, uh, Byron Valdez, Daniel Galili are kind of the big names. Um, and so one thing to note, they lost their setter last year, Zero Meyer, who we'll get to here in a little bit, I'm sure. Um, but bringing in a new setter, and so that'll be the big question mark for Grandview this year. And then third and fourth teams, I would say, would be uh, my school, William Penn. Um, we finished second last year in conference, uh, missed out of the national tournament, but returned five All-Americans, uh, including previous, not last year, but the year before, national player of the year, Landon Krause, uh, Ike Papes, Charlie Figgy, two other guys to note. And then I would say the fourth team, um, you could argue it could be someone, you know, a couple of different teams, but I'm going to say Missouri Baptist. Uh, they've been a contender the last couple of years. And their big, big uh, kind of thing to note at the, uh, the semester here is they're bringing in a transfer, uh, a guy from Serbia who played at uh, University of Hawaii for a little bit. Um, and you can tell me the correct name here, uh, Jared, but is it Alec uh, Mendic? Mendic, I believe. Mendic, Mendic okay. Yeah, so um, so he'll be coming in. I think he plays on the left and the right, but a lefty with a big arm. So he should provide a serious threat um, at the net and from the service line for them. So that's probably the top four teams from the heart that I would say would be looking for uh, for contention this year. And I could, who knows what the national tournament looks like, but I could see one, two, three, all four going. I mean, it just depends on on how the year will shake out. Yeah, and I think the big story within that, if you look at kind of end of the year, one of the big conversations with Hart and um, my conference, the GSAC, is those at-large bids come the end of the year. Um, there are automatic bids for whoever wins the conference tournament, but those at-large bids, there's only four of them each year. And one of those four is likely going to be taken uh, by Mount Mercy, who is hosting the national tournament. Uh, assuming they have over, I believe it's a 650 yeah. uh, win-loss record, uh, which looking at their schedule, I, would, I think a lot of people assume that they're going to be able to get there. Uh, and so Mount Mercy from your conference will um, likely be in the national tournament uh, as an at-large, assuming they don't have a phenomenal year and win their conference and, and upset a lot of people. Um, but that will kind of limit some of these at-large um positions uh this upcoming year looking towards the end of the season so yeah last year we saw that uh grandview was the automatic bid they hosted and they did not win the conference so they did take an at-large the other at-larges were taken by you just mentioned your conference um so the gsec had representation from four schools so yeah kind of a interesting turn of events to see how it goes this year with a new team hosting how that will play out um, and yeah, that's the tough part where there's a very small amount of at-larges is what everyone's going for. Yep. And give me your opinion on that from last year. Had Grandview not been hosting, would they have gotten one of those at-larges? Um, I don't, I don't believe so. Uh, I believe, uh, the conversation that was had at the national selection committee, um, we were talking between a couple different teams and I think the resumes were all pretty similar. Uh, I do believe 
Grammy would have been in the conversation. Um, but that's the tough part is, is you're really battling for four spots, but really it's about one or two spots because usually one or two at larges that are pretty much sealed or, or teams that have kind of uh, sealed their fate there. So yeah, that's a really tough conversation to have. And, and I'm actually a part of that committee. And every year that's a long call to, to figure that stuff out. And uh, yeah, if you're in Mount Mercy, you're in a great spot this year because you're going no matter what. For sure, for sure. Uh, now I'll talk uh, fairly quickly about uh, the GSAC conference. Uh, there's six teams in the GSAC, Vanguard, Menlo, Ottawa, Masters, Arizona Christian, and Hope. Um, last year, I would say there was four of those six kind of separated themselves in Vanguard, Masters, Ottawa, and Menlo. Uh, and then Arizona Christian and Hope were kind of uh, in a second tier, I'd say. And all four of those uh, last year were really ranked in the top 10 most of the year, and all four ended up uh, getting into the national tournament, three of those uh, being at-large bids. Um, but I think last year was a very, very strong year for our conference. Uh, this year, we have a lot of graduating uh, guys that aren't returning, uh, and I think a lot of teams look a little bit different. Um, and so the first one uh, I would really want to highlight is Vanguard, uh, who lost their uh, All-American Kyle Anima, lost their other outside Tanner Woods, and lost their libero Ryan Jew. Uh, and so just to replace um, their entire passing lineup, I think will will make a lot of, puts a lot of question marks on what that team looks like this year. Uh, they returned their setter, 6'10", 6'9", 6'10", uh, setter is along, along with their right side, Will Anderson, who's about 6'8", so really big right side block uh, coming from that team. Uh, got some physical guys, but certainly will look different than, than last year. Um, and then uh, Ottawa, like you mentioned, they, uh, they picked up one of the bigger offseason transfers in Zio Meyer uh, from Grandview University and previously BYU. Um, they, I believe they graduated their, their setter from last year, Tyler Gardenhire, uh, who is a pretty solid player, one of the more physical guys. Um, but I think the question mark will be like, what does their offense look like with Zio? Um, they also return their top um, outside hitter uh, in Emery Uden, uh, as well as their other outside out of Nestor, I believe also returns. And so uh, have a mix of returners, some new guys, some graduated guys that I'm not sure exactly what look like what it will look like um, come season, um, but I'll be interested. They are one of the teams flying out in the first weekend at the end of January uh, to a tournament that I'm sure we'll talk about a little bit more later in Chicago uh, that will get some good tests right from the start, uh, and so we'll see early how they are. Uh, and then Menlo, uh, they return, but I believe their top outside from last year was Conrad Solinsky. Uh, he is a pretty dangerous server, um, as well as their right side, Julius Steimer. Uh, Conrad, I believe, is from Poland, and, and Julius Steimer is from Germany, and so they've got some foreigners uh, on their roster. They pull in, I believe, one other Polish outside this year uh, that we saw a little bit in the fall, um, but we didn't really see their whole lineup. Uh, graduated their libero from last year, graduated their setter from last year, uh, graduated their 02 from last year. So I think they start to look a little bit different um, and, and might not quite be to the level that they were last year, um, unless some of the new guys step up. So we'll see. Um, and then you got Masters. I think one of the things a lot of people are looking at us asking is, how are you guys going to be without Nolan Flexen? So obviously, uh, a lot of our offense went through him last year. And so we're going to be a very different type of team. Um, we were a little bit one dimensional in a lot of ways, um, rightly so last year. Uh, we ended up losing Nolan, for those of you guys that don't know, to UC Irvine. Um, and so we uh, we should be a little bit different of a team, a little bit more spread out. Uh, we return uh, All-American Diego Perez. We return our, our lefty right side, Isaac Seltzer. Uh, return one of our middles, return our libero. Um, got, a, got a really only graduated two in terms of our middle and our middle Brett Norcus and then uh, Nolan Flexen. So have a lot of the same guys returning, um, bring in a transfer from UC Santa Barbara, bring in a transfer from Concordia Irvine. Uh, and so I think we're gonna be right in that mix again uh, this year, but obviously I think we're gonna look a lot different than we were last year. 
Uh, then you have Arizona Christian and Hope. Arizona Christian loses their All-American Chris Beck, I believe. He's not coming back. I think there was rumors going back and forth. Um, and so they're going to they drop in that piece, but I think they're, they're going to be a little bit more well-rounded. And then I think Hope is a team that uh, they were struggling a lot last year. They, they recruited a lot, got a lot of JUCO kids coming in that, that will certainly uh, be a little bit more competitive this year. So that should be interesting top to bottom within the GSAC if any big upsets can be pulled off. Um, so so the you, last two years, uh, the last year and the year before, we, you and I both coached the National Player of the Year. Uh, yeah. What's, what's the mindset? I, I have a year now in between. What's the mindset for the team going in, knowing you're lo- – unfortunately, or fortunately for us, unfortunately, we still have our guy, you lost your guy. But what, what's the mindset going in, coming off of – having the best player in the country like how, how does yeah, it I, uh, I think i think the question is like hey who all steps up in, in some different ways um what i actually really like about my team right now and this is unique to nai and unique to covid is we've got a couple guys that are like 24 on our roster so we have some older guys some more experienced guys i think three guys on my team graduated high school in 2018. so it it gives us a little bit more older leadership experience there. Um, But obviously we know that we're not gonna be as one dimensional as we were last year in that way. Um, I mean, you still have your former national player of the year uh, who was a little bit beat up and injured last year. So I think the question is, is also just like staying healthy, right? I I look top to bottom in these these top 10 teams or so. Um, We all have positions that we can't afford injuries. Right. And so your season can completely come together or fall apart based on how healthy you are. And so luckily we're a little bit more, a little bit more spread out and even, but I don't know if that'll be a good thing or bad thing. So uh, to be determined. Right. Yeah. Uh, Do you want to break down the CCAC? Yeah. Yeah. Chicago Land Athletic Conference. Um, So uh, San Xavier has won that conference for as long as I can remember. Um, I believe they should be the uh, contender to do the same this year. Um, they return almost everybody. Uh, they had two guys they brought in last year, um, two foreigners, two Polish guys, actually, and uh, one on the left, one on the right. Um, Hans Lopuk. Um, and then what's the second one, Jared? Oscar Krizak. Uh, Krizak, yeah, that's right. Um, so, so both those guys are, are back again. Um, both had great years for them. And I think that was kind of a, a missing piece, uh, as the last couple of years. Um, I think they were just a little bit short on, on some of that strength on, on the pins. Um, but yeah, I mean, they have a new set of this year. Uh, I believe it'll be a freshman Cam Daniels, um, out of uh, Nebraska. So it'll be interesting to see who's running the offense. Um, they bring in another transfer, a BYU guy, um, an Italian kid in the middle, um, and return mostly everyone else. So they're, they're pretty deep. Um, they have one of the biggest rosters in the NAI, and so they, have, they definitely have enough talent. And, um, yeah, they're in a, a great location. So Chicago is obviously great for, for recruiting for them, and they've done a really good job of capitalizing on it that last couple of years. So I, I believe they will be the favorite. Uh, closely followed behind them, I think, would be a mix of uh, a Judson team, uh, Olivet Nazarene, and possibly Trinity Christian. Um, Olivet and Naz has kind of been right there the last couple of years and Judson's been, uh, either two or three as well. Um, so I believe those two will probably be the biggest contenders. Um, Trinity lost, uh, their best player last year. Um, so I think they're, they're down a little bit. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see who can kind of test San Xavier early on. And you mentioned already, uh, San Xavier is hosting an opening weekend tournament that both our teams will be at with some pretty stiff competition. So very interesting to see kind of what they look like moving forward. That's probably been the biggest thing. Uh, we both know Tom Ryan, their head coach, pretty well. He's trying to to test the the team as much as they can because of the conference they're in, um, and they don't have the the luxury that you and I have of playing the the top ten teams every week. So um, yeah, that, that'll be an interesting kind of uh, test to see what that looks like. But I, I expect San Diego to be the, the top runner again. Yeah, I'm a uh, I'm a big fan of their schedule right now uh and so obviously we're we're going out to them first week of january they're actually taking a west coast trip um as well during spring break later in the year and they're going to play uh masters and vanguard as well out here uh they've got non-conference games as well i think i've got masters twice ottawa 
once, William Penn, Missouri Baptist, Ben U Mesa, Jamestown, uh, King University uh, NCA School, um, Georgetown, uh, Concordia Irvine, Indiana Tech, Lords twice. Uh, so they're they're testing themselves well, um, even if they don't get um, quite the competition that that the Hart or the GSAC get during conference season. So um, should they get upset in the finals? I think they've put their putting together a resume with just who they're playing, uh, that they would be in certainly in contention for an at-large spot should right. they happen to not win their conferences. So right. I think that's very interesting. One of the other things on, on St. Xavier, they um, they landed a transfer from Long Beach City College, Matt Pinella, who's a very good player. He was the start, one of the top JUCO uh, outsides for him last year, a uh, former player at USC as well. And so uh, I... I know I've seen Matt play, and I think I'd be surprised if he wasn't on the court somewhere with them too. And so uh, they're, they're gonna, they might even have more depth than a lot of other teams that we're talking about right now uh, as we talk about injuries and who's coming back and what that might look like. Uh, I think St. Xavier will be a dangerous team. Um, and funny enough, I play them first game of the year. And so I'll, uh, I'll get to know them pretty quickly. And so that should be very, very interesting. Um, I'll go over the CalPAC real quick. CalPAC is the other West Coast Conference. Um, for those NAI fans out there, uh, the GSAC and the CalPAC are starting to change in future years. This is kind of the last year as it's status quo. Uh, Vanguard and Menlo will be leaving the GSAC and going Division Two and joining the MPSF. Um, with that, Benedictine Mesa uh, and Park Gilbert and St. Catherine will be joining the GSAC. Uh, coming next year, and so uh, I'm not sure exactly what the CalPAC's looking like last year, or next year, um, but we did get a couple of their top teams, and uh, I think looking into that in the same way we talked about St. Xavier dominating the CCAC, uh, that's been the case the last few years for uh, Benedictine Mesa as well, and they return a, a good number of guys with Dupree Rogers and Landon Fuller, Daxton Tolman, and John Dawson. Uh, they do have two they lost two people in, in Jolly, one of their outsides, and then Tyler Watts um, was a top middle in the country that, that transferred to BYU this year. Um, and so they're going to have a couple pieces to replace. But, uh, I mean, they've been in the national tournament finals, what, the last three years now? Yeah. Um, yeah. I would have to think, given that what some of the other top teams have lost, that they might go into the year being the favorite, uh, the team to beat. And in early February, uh, we'll be able to tell a little bit more as they play. Uh, Masters, we're going out there as well as Park, Missouri is, is flying out uh, as well. And we're all playing each other. And so that should be a good weekend on the schedule. Um, and they, uh, I'm trying to think, they also play Bethel and Cornerstone are also, and, and Ottawa, uh, our team's coming out to play them as well. And so that should be uh, a little bit interesting because they, they tend to roll through their conference a little bit more. Um, that being said, that the other team that is certainly up and coming has gotten better in their conference is Westcliff. Uh, they had two, I believe, outsides, uh, Laser and Pizza. Um, Pizza, and both of them had over eight kills per set combined last year, and they returned both of those guys. Um, so they, uh, they would, I would say, they'd be the next team to keep an eye out for. Uh, and then Simpson, St. Catherine, UC Merced would kind of be next tier. Uh, Park Gilbert and Pacific Union are the teams that kind of round out that conference. But Grand Jay team will be the team to watch um, and the team to beat within that conference as they play some tough out-of-conference games as well. Um, you want to go over the uh, the WAC? Sure. Yeah. Uh, Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference, so the Michigan-Indiana schools mostly. Um, Indiana Tech, their reigning champ. Um, they do lose their... Uh, inaugural head coach who started the program, Kyle Shandell. Um, so they hired a, a new head coach this year who's actually a former assistant of mine, Jordan Rosenberg. And so Jordan takes over a pretty good team, uh, return a lot. Uh, Dante Stewart's kind of the, the main piece there outside, um, fifth-year guy now, um, All-American. And so he'll probably be the go-to where the offense kind of runs through him. Um, but also return the right side, their setter, um it's a it's a good squad and uh and they should be pretty tough in a, in a pretty tough conference 
probably after that is Lords, who's been a contender every year for a long time. Um, I know they lost a couple guys. Uh, they're outside. Um, who, his name escaped me. I'm looking at it right now. Um, oh, Ayala. That's right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Ayala was, I think, the conference player of the year last year. I'm almost positive. Um, and so, yeah, they lose him. Um, but they seem to kind of reload every year a little bit. And I'm sure they'll be competitive again. The rest of this conference we were just talking before we started recording, uh, I think is really interesting. Um, so you have uh, a group of teams here that I'm going to say would be Mount Vernon as Bethel, Cornerstone, Lawrence Tech, and maybe even Aqu Aquinas um, that have all shown either serious progress or uh, a team in Aquinas who's made the national tournament two years ago um, that could be pretty competitive. So Bethel in their second year, um, Eric Snyder's their head coach. Eric has been in the national tournament uh, with other schools. He does a great job. Um, and then Lawrence Tech, Cornerstone, and Mount Vernon Naz are all kind of in that young, uh, you know, up and coming kind of window where they're building and getting a little bit better and had some pretty good wins over the years. So I think it's a it's a good group. So I think like the two through seven kind of uh, slot there is be really interesting. Um, I do think it's Indiana's te Indiana Tech's conference to lose at this point. Um, but the rest, I think, are all uh, pretty tough. So that's definitely something for me where I'm keeping my eye out for kind of that middle to, to early pack of the whack of see what that looks like. Because I think uh, that could get kind of interesting depending on you know who's playing who and, and what's going on there. Yeah, what I'm interested in with that with Indiana Tech is they have a lot of older guys, a lot of returners. They seem to be a very similar team as last year um, who made the tournament. And yet their schedule, I would say, is on the weaker side. Yeah. Uh, so should they not win their conference tournament? I'm not sure if they schedule tough enough to really be in the running for an at-large bid. Um, they're going to have a good ranked game against St. Xavier. Um, but the next toughest teams on their schedule are, are Weber and Warner and Judson and, and Georgetown, maybe. Um, and so not the toughest schedule. Lords plays a much tougher schedule. Um, and so if they can take a step up and play better, like I, I would say they could be in the mix based on how they schedule. Uh, but Indiana Tech's schedule is a little bit on the weaker side, even though I, I know their team is going to be pretty good uh, with yeah. who they return. Did I say that that Lords loses Ayala? You have on your notes that he returns, so I apologize. If he's returning. Yeah, I, I believe he, okay. he returns, okay. yeah. I take that back then. Sorry. I, he's, he's a good guy to highlight, but if he's coming back, then it's even better. So – um, sorry, yeah. To mix up. Sorry. Yeah, I, I think they should be in the mix uh, again. I mean, last year, Indian Tech and Lords were kind of back and forth, I feel yeah. like, most of the year. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I could see that kind of going either way uh, yeah. as well. So um, going down, I think the last two conferences are the Mid South and the AAC. Um, Mid South, uh, both these conferences a couple years ago were combined, and then they kind of split into two conferences. Um, the Mid-South, the, the two teams that were kind of rose the top have been Georgetown and Campbellsville. Both of them have been dominant at different times. And uh, Campbellsville had a lot of turnover last year uh, with their coach uh, leaving. And, um, you know, I, I looked up their roster the other day and they have a ton, a ton, a ton of inter international guys that are new and coming in. And, and I think they're just a big question mark of, of what does that actually look like? Um, I saw a freshman labeled on the roster. There's three from Brazil, one from Serbia, one from Philippines, one from Spain, one from Germany, and two from Puerto Rico. Uh, and so that's, that's quite a mix. And I think whenever you see that many international guys on a roster, um, it's just like, I, you're not sure what you're going to see, right? They could be all world players. Or they could just not make that much of a difference. It could go either way, really. Um, and then Georgetown, I think, uh, you know, that's an interesting team. I think they've been very talented for the last few years, um, but they graduated a, a big group of Kowalski, the Polish uh, outside, Ryan Gunn, the Australian outside, and Kasper, Kasper uh, Dabrowski, the, the setter from Poland as well. Um, and so I'm not sure who they brought in. It should be interesting to see if they can be as high of a level as they, they have been able to at times. Uh, in the last couple of years. Um, rounding out the Mid-South Conference includes Cumberland, Rio Grande, Midway, and Bresca, um, which honestly, I don't know that much about those teams and, and where they're at, if they're able to push and 
and potentially win that conference. Um, and then the AAC last year, it was really Warner and Weber. Uh, Weber, Warner was actually pretty much winning the whole year. Uh, and then Weber upset them in the national or in the uh, conference tournament and made it to the national tournament. Um, so I got to see them live a little bit at the national tournament last year, and they have won, um, I believe he's now a sophomore outside here, Carson Barnes, uh, who's a pretty good player, physical uh, athlete. They, uh, they're they also another school, Weber, that lost their coach this year. Uh, Robert Peluso was, was coaching them, um, and now he's gone. So I think there's a lot of um, just I'm not sure what they look like uh, for for those AAC teams. Uh, both Warner and Weber, uh, I do not believe, have their schedules posted online, so it's really hard to tell what's going on there. And so right. I would encourage you guys, if you're watching this, get your schedules posted and, and get that out there. Um, so that's okay. a breakdown. In yeah. terms of the Mid-South, um, just some, some thoughts on the rest of the teams you mentioned. Um, Cumberland's been pretty competitive in the middle of the pack, and, and they've beaten a couple of those teams up top. Um, so I do think that they're competitive. Rio Grand's getting a little bit better. Um, and then Midway had a coaching change last year and Brushes in their first year. So um, we've played a couple of those teams the last couple of years, so I'm a little familiar. Um, but you're right to highlight Georgetown and Campbellsville are kind of the main two there. And that's kind of been Georgetown's conference to lose the last couple of years. So, yeah, yeah. So it should be interesting. Now, um, within those we've we've highlighted i believe we've gone over every nope we forgot the g-pack do you know the g-pack well oh yeah yeah i'll go g-pack yeah, go ahead T talk about the g-pack i'm just sorry for the g-pack guys we almost missed you there um yeah g-pack is one of the smaller ones um it's uh i'll just give the teams real quick jamestown dort morningside uh kansas wesleyan ottawa kansas and then central christian um highlighting the top couple Jamestown's won it every year, I believe. Um, and so they're in an interesting position. Um, they were a top 10, almost top five team a couple of years ago. Um, made uh, the last level, I think they made a, a national tournament every year they've been in existence. Um, but things have kind of changed with the coaching change and, and they've lost a lot of the guys they had when they brought in originally. Um, they do return All-American Kaylor Cox. Um, and I'm not sure about the rest. Uh, a lot of uh, unfamiliar faces for me, a lot of new names. Um, so don't know how they're going to be. And then Dort, however, um, a little different. Uh, had their best year ever last year. Uh, they split with Jamestown in the regular season. They lost in the conference finals, so Jamestown went to the national tournament. But I believe Dort, looking to be competitive again, they did lose their best player last year. Um, and uh, and we'll see kind of what they look like in terms of the roster. But I believe those are the top two teams to beat in that conference. Morningside has improved over the years. Kansas Wesleyan entering their third year should also be improved. So look for those two teams to uh, maybe make up a, a win or two here or there. Um, but I believe, again, Jamestown probably the team to, to beat there. Um, but I also wouldn't sleep on Dort. So an interesting conference, um, a very not travel-friendly conference um, that I, I, I don't envy those teams. But, uh, yeah, they, so they're they're – just a little west of us, so we play a couple of those schools. But yeah, thanks for not skipping them. I forgot about them too. Yeah, I I was going through my list. I'm like, I hey, wait. Yeah. Uh, all right, now now we've gone through all those conferences, all the conferences around the country right now. Um, who would you say for for the fans of NAI men's volleyball are the players to watch? People that you think might be in the conversation for national player of the year come the end of the year. Um, or teams that are that kind of look exciting for you? I'll, I'll give you two players right now that I think uh, I, I, I base it off experience of playing. Uh, Joao Fredrich, conference player of the year at the Heart of America Park, a uh, four-year starter this year now going into his fourth year. Um, just a stud on the outside. We play him every year, twice a year. We played him three times a year the last two years. Don't like playing him. Don't like you know going against him. A hard player to scout for. Just a, an absolute stud of a, an outside. and. Uh, I, I would be shocked if not uh, uh, another All-American and possible National Player of the Year. So he's absolutely one to watch for if you ever get to see Park play this year. Uh, and the second would be uh, Landon Fuller, who I, I believe in his fifth year now, Ben Mesa. Um, I got to see him play at the National Tournament last year live. Um, the year before, we didn't end up you know, seeing them at all with the, the schedule. But saw him in the semis last year in the finals. Um, just a difference maker for them. Um, just physical uh, elevates well. I mean, just you could tell absolutely uh, a go-to guy for, for them. And, and I, I 
could absolutely see him being in the conversation as well. Yeah, I think uh, those two guys you highlighted were probably the third best and fourth best outsides in the country last year. And the first and second both left. Yeah. Um, I would say so, what, first, first would be flex and second would be anima. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that, yeah. that would be my opinion. For right? sure. Um, Kyle Animo was a was an All-America as well from Vanguard who graduated. Um, and so, yeah, both those guys, some of the top outsides in the country um, coming up now. Uh, I would say the other guys I, I would probably highlight are the top two. I'm definitely going to leave my guy off here on this one. But yeah. let's say top two oppos in the country um, would be uh, your guy, uh, Landon Krauss, who was a former National Player of the Year two years ago. Krause, Krause. Krause, Krause. 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 Um, he, uh, he was kind of up and down last year just based on some injuries, uh, but very talented, very physical lefty uh, opposite um, that's a, a tough guy to stop. And then the other one is in my conference uh, is Will Anderson, uh, 6'8", righty oppo. Um, he was a JUCO transfer from Orange Coast College. Um and last year, I would say he had some games that he completely took over and then some other games that he was kind of up and down, right? Uh, but this year, I think that team is going to rely on him a lot more. Uh, Ryan Smith, their setter, gives him a little bit slower of a ball, kind of can give the ball to him from from anywhere on the court. And so he's a tough guy to kind of take out of their offense. Um, and you, you be, played them four times last year? Yeah, yeah. And then we've... We've already played them once this fall. Then we play them in like two weeks in a scrimmage and then two more times in regular season, then maybe conference tournament, then maybe national tournament. So we can play them up to six times this year. So, so you've seen the the either just the OK or they're really, really good. And I think you're right. The really good for him is is probably national player of the year level. I, I would think yes. so. The way he can dominate a game and um, kind of take control of that. I, I personally believe I'm the outside looking in, but. He was a major factor in them winning the whole thing last year, which is watching from the, the semifinals and finals. Yep, yep. And now I would say that uh, their outside last year, Kyle Animo, was a little bit more consistent throughout the year. Um, and so Will didn't have to be that guy every single night. Uh, but he certainly, certainly has the ability uh, yeah. to do that. So that should be, um, should be very interesting uh, moving forward. Now... Um, Let's talk about schedules. What are the games that you have kind of circled or highlighted or the weekends and, and what's going on in different areas of the country that the fans should be tuning in for to watch some NAI volleyball? I think you guys start with the opening weekend, right? We're, we're both going to be there. You're you're flying. I'm only driving. Um, but San Xavier, who we just talked about, uh, you know, winning their conference of the year, top 10 team usually is hosting a tournament uh, the last weekend in January. Um, so both Jared and I will be there with our teams and we play, uh, both Ottawa, Arizona and San Xavier. Um, I know Lords will be present, obviously the masters, um, Granby university from the heart of America. Um, am I missing anyone? James sounds coming out. Right, James. Um, Ottawa's coming out yep. as well. So I would say that would be like the central hub in the, in the last weekend in January of some so, of the top games. The, yeah, the the fun part, but the scary part is it's opening weekend. So you're going to see a little bit uh, of maybe what teams are trying to figure out. You're going to see a little bit of a, a change from last year's teams, depending on who's on the court. Um, there's a lot that could go on that opening weekend. So I, I look for that to be kind of a test for a lot of those top teams to kind of see where everyone's at. Um, I also expect things to change drastically from January to April. Um, but I think that's probably the opening weekend I have my eye on, not only just because we're going to be there, but also because for everyone else that will be there as well. So that for me, that's the biggest one non-conference wise that I have circled is, is opening weekend in Chicago. Yes, for sure. Um, I would say the other two, there's, I believe that Lords is hosting a tournament. We're going there as well. Do you know who else is in that uh, tournament? Uh, Georgetown, Lords, um, Menlo, and then us, William Penn, I don't know after that. So I know those four for sure, but that's a pretty good four right there. So yep. if there's someone else I'm missing, I apologize. But that's, now, that's what I know of. Now, when is that tournament? So that would be the second weekend of February, the 9th and the 10th. Okay. So yep. The 11th, whatever it is. Yeah. And then uh, in terms of some other non-conference crossovers, in the first weekend of February, um, 
Masters is going out to Benedictine Mesa, uh, and Park Missouri is also flying out to Benedictine Mesa. And so we're all getting to play each other. Masters has a match against Park and Benue, uh, and then Benue and Park both play each other as well. And so those should be certainly top 10 ranked matches uh, going into the match from last year's semifinals from Park and uh, Benue, yeah. Yeah, which was uh, which is quite a match for anybody that wants to go back and watch it. Uh, a little for, heated for at multiple, times. multiple reasons, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that match got a little bit heated, and so I'll be interested to see what that looks like um, as they get in person at Venue. And so, what, what would you say would be the the big conference matchups that you think are, are maybe, obviously are big, but like maybe that are going to have the most, uh, you know, whatever we're looking for, carry the heaviest weight, you know, what is going to be the, the ones that are going to make the biggest difference for team seasons. Yeah, I think, you know, I look into the end of the year and what at-large selection looks like and and how these matchups look. Um, I've got to think almost all, probably all of the at-large conversations will be between the Hart teams and the GSAC teams. Um, personally, I'd be a little bit surprised if any other teams snuck in there. Uh, unless there was a big upset at the end, yeah, uh, which could certainly happen. Um, but I don't see any second or third or fourth teams in a conference being quite as strong as either the GSAC teams or the Hart teams. Um, and so, I mean, within that, I think, you know, the, the William Penn Grandview matches are always fun to watch. Um, I think there's there's question marks on, you know, how good really will be Missouri Valley and Mount Mercy and Missouri Baptist, who are kind of second tier in your conference, but certainly good teams and, and probably going to be better this year than they were last year um, with all those teams. Um, and then within the GSAC, you know, between any match between Vanguard, Menlo, Ottawa, and Masters could always go either way. Uh, the four of us have really been been close uh, over the last couple of years and and certainly I think getting closer and closer um, you know with the with the top teams maybe taking a little bit of a step down and, and the bottom teams in that group potentially taking a little bit of a step up I could really see it going in any direction yeah would um, you say because of your travel a little bit further um, not maybe for you guys but for some of the teams you just talked about the Ottawa and the Menlo do you see a lot of home court advantage in that those conference matchups? So you have everyone twice. So obviously you're away and then you're home or vice versa. Do you do you find a trend that in your in the GSAC that the home teams tend to win or, or is it pretty? Uh, up? Not it's, necessarily, but depending on the uh, the environment of that gym. Uh, and so, as you know, uh, actually, I don't know how much you saw it last year because you guys came out during spring good, break. Good, good crowd, though. We, we, we can certainly get some crowds, and so that yeah. can turn into some home court advantage for sure, um, depending on if you're a Friday night game or a Saturday night game, if you're kind of there during a hot time or not. Um, you know, honestly, Vanguard doesn't get much of a crowd because they don't even play in their own gym uh, on their campus because their gym is being rebuilt. Um, Ottawa can get some people there. Menlo's typically pretty dead, and so I wouldn't say – it's a heavy home court advantage other than um, just getting to sleep in your bed and not having to travel and just the normal, like that just is what it is. Um, but I, I, I would say our travel is fairly simple. Yeah. For, for the heart of America, I, I just speak for us and a couple other teams where a couple of years ago, I think that the home court was pretty real. I mean, Grandview, no one really beat Grandview on their home court for a while. Uh, we beat them last year on the home court for the first time ever, and that kind of changed things. Uh, we had a home court advantage for a couple years too there. Um, but then again, I looked to like we won some games on the road last year, lost a couple at home last year. I didn't think we lose. So I'm not sure it exists for us either uh, in, in our conference, I think at times, but I've seen enough of both that I don't know if that matters either. So I would say, you know, just speaking of the conference, you know, the late, like you said, the, the early April matchups of, of you know, if, if we go to Grandview in the early April, you know, or if Mobap goes to, to park or those kind of things, um, depending on who's home or away. But I'm not sure if that matters. I think it'll be interesting to see kind of who who's playing well at the time, who's healthy, all that stuff. Um, but those are going to be huge. I mean, you talked about those fringe teams or the teams that haven't made it recently, the Missouri Valley, the, the Mount Mercy and the Missouri Baptist, like they're going to have to win. They're going to have to win in April to, to put themselves in conversation and then to go from there. So, yeah, it'll be a, 
interesting to see how it goes. Yep. Now, here's my last big question for you. What's your hot take on the year? What do you think would be a little bit of a surprise uh, that you could see happening potentially? Oh, I have a couple of things down here. I, I just don't know how far to go with this. I, I guess one would be I'll, I'll stay with our conference because that's what I'm most knowledgeable on. I don't want to get everyone you know, DMing me about, about saying some stuff I don't know about. Um, I think the heart's going to look really different the year, this year. Uh, I think there's going to be uh, another new conference champion. Last year, uh, Park was the first team to win it in six years. Granby had won like six or seven in a row. Um, so I think we're going to see a new champion this year. Um, I think we're going to see a, a, a team or two that normally makes the national tournament not make it. Um, partly from what you said earlier that Montmercy, who will be a new team going, is automatically going probably. So that will obviously shake things up. Um, but that's my prediction. I think it's going to be look a little different. Um, everyone's been used to seeing the – the Grandview guarantee, the park mostly guarantee, and then a little bit of William Penn or Missouri Baptist recently. But um, I think things will be a little different this year. So that's my guess. I'm hoping different in a, in a good way for, for William Penn. But, um, yeah, that's what I got so far probably. And, and I'll, I'll leave the other hot takes uh, for, for other times. Yeah, no, fair enough. I don't want to get you in trouble here. Yeah. Uh, on my side, within the GSAC, I could certainly see, and, and this has been the case – I believe the last two years, uh, yeah, the last two years, the team that has won the regular season has not won the conference tournament. Yeah. Um, and I would not be surprised to see that once again. Um, and, and part of it is, I think, whoever's winning the GSAC regular season knows that they're going to make the tournament regardless. Right? And so there's not as much fire at the end there. And whoever's two, three, and four – is trying to scratch and claw and fight their way in because they're not really sure uh, right. if their season's over or not. And so I could certainly see that that happening again. Uh, our conference tournament, I'm lucky enough, is at Masters this year. So I'm super pumped. We have a predetermined site uh, and we've been, we, we got to host it this year. And so um, I'm making that hot take. We'll see if, we'll see if that includes us or not. Uh, it could be Masters not winning conference and winning conference tournament or and that was us last year um, or the other way around. Right. We could win conference and then and then not be there quite at the end, too. So uh, I can see that go a lot deeper. Yeah, I'll throw one more random thing in. I feel like uh, this is not really that impressive of a take, but there's always players that emerge every year that by the middle of the year, I'm like, where did this kid come from? Um, and so I think we're going to see that again. We're going to see some guys that we didn't mention in our national player of the year conversation. I know we didn't go through that many names. Um, those are the obvious ones, right? The ones that we've seen over the years that have been, uh, the, the contributors that are, are making a name for themselves. But I, I just, there's going to be some guys pop off this year that we're going to say, where did that guy come from? And, uh, I'm, I'm excited to see it, but I could, I could definitely say that people are going to be, you know, uh, have or expect that, that you're going to see some names pop up that are going to be guys that are going to be just putting up crazy good numbers um that i mean that's what we, we've seen it every year i mean right i mean like i said we've done it last couple of years you guys have done it a couple other teams are just kind of come out of nowhere and, and they're going to do something crazy so i'm prepared to see that happen again yep yeah we'll see we'll see who that is and uh we'll we'll be able to tell probably by the the first or second week of february who that who that might be Right. Uh, given the crossover matches between conferences and the teams traveling, which I'm super excited to see. So, yeah. very good. Well, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for your time, Luke. Um, if any other coaches or fans want to hop on one of these throughout the year, I'll see if I can do this semi occasionally. We'll see how my season's going and, and how busy things are. Uh, just shoot me a DM on Instagram or wherever. Um, and I'd love to have some more coaches on. So, Perfect. Thank you, Luke. Yep. Thanks, Dad.